Hello everyone and welcome to this video. The fishing update has officially been out for about one and a half days now and I've noticed people have been talking about it. It's been kind of discussed in my Discord server, it's been discussed on my YouTube. So I've been working diligently here to bring to you the experience of fishing with my Regal built boats as well as the Oma Marina here. So I'm going to go through and explain some of the changes that I've made as well as the refresh that I've given to the Regal built Reba. This boat has been going viral because of the feature on the home page, but there has been some issues with it and I'll discuss that, explain what I've done and kind of the engineering behind it actually, because I know some of you want to hear about engineering things. So first thing I'm going to do is talk about this updated marina. There has been a request to add a electric car charger, so I may put that here in the future, but it's not here for this update. This update is called, in essence, the fishing update for the Oma diving, or the Oma Marina here. So we have it more or less the same with the addition of fishing rods. So the Marina itself, you come down here, you're going to find someone left their tackle box and they left a fishing rod inside a case. So you can pick it up and fish with it if you so desire. So that is right there for you. But if you're not the person that forgot their stuff, you can enter the locker and actually find two blue and two red fishing rods. So the locker also has fishing equipment as well as this stuff that's out here. All of these boats that you see here in the marina have been updated for the fishing update. So all of the Regal built lineup. I didn't go ahead, I did not update the ribs for the reason that the ribs are more utility, more for kind of life saving, etc., or just carrying, transporting things. Whereas these Regal built boats are really leisure crafts. So we're going to start off with the biggest, the Regal built Dubina. And over here, you can see that I've not actually changed it from an exterior point of view, except for the fact that you now have these two doors that you can open and there is fish hoppers inside each one. So the fish hoppers live inside these trapped doors. And the reason for that is to keep the deck nice and clean. And here you have fishing rods. And on this side here, you have fishing rods. So there's actually four fishing rods and two hoppers because this is the biggest boat of all, the biggest regal built boat. And I wanted it to have the most capacity for leisurely fishing. So that is over here. Next up, we're going to get to the Talus. Now the Talus is the second largest. It has a cabin down here. But if we just enter into this room, you can see that now I put a hopper here. So previously this was just all deck. Now there's a little built-in hopper on the floor. So the reason for that, of course, is so we have um, just a nice easy access and it doesn't really take up any space and you have your fishing rods back there. There's only two fishing rods here. Actually, there may be more inside the cabin. Oh yes. So we got two more inside the cabin. So you can have four people fishing here. Of course, the ones in the cabin are presumably better because they, you know, put their private stash in here. Now I'm not going to talk about the changes and fixes I've made, but what I will say is that up here we have the gear and there is three, there are three fishing rods. And then back here, there's one more fishing rod. So again, we have four and I kind of showed you how I built in this hopper. So the fish fridge is kind of built into this rear area. So it does look okay. I'm not a huge fan of that black blob right there, but it is what it is. The rest will do. So this has been updated. Then we get over to our smaller boats. I'm still going to start off with the largest over here. And this is called the Sova. Now the Sova is actually pretty big and it is more luxurious than the two white ones over there the reba and the talus so it is kind of like a little bit of a yacht you do have the fish fridge now built into this rear area not a huge fan of how it is but it is what it is this is supposed to be a bed so pretend you have a cooler like a fridge back here all good and then i've added fishing rods here and here now there are only two fishing rods in this boat for now I may go ahead and put fishing rods under the whole seats, but I figured that this was sort of enough for this boat. It's a bit of a leisure boat, you know, especially you could tie up wakeboarding or if you put a tube or whatever. Obviously not in the game, but that's kind of what this um, spoiler is supposed to be. 
Then we get over here to the Reka, or Rika, and in here, this boat does not have a hopper, and the reason for that is it is just too small for that. It's supposed to be a speed boat. It's supposed to be, you know, you're taking it out and going quite fast. It's a cigarette boat, but I did put in this gear locker up here, you will find one single fishing rod as well as diving equipment. So you can fish off this boat too, um, and then just keep your fish in your inventory. That will have to work for this case. And last but not least, over here, we got the Koopa. And in the Koopa, you also have one single fishing rod, I think, yeah. So one single fishing rod, if you are so inclined to fish, you can do it from the Koopa, you just cannot um, store it again. You could store the fish in your inventory rather than in a hopper because these ones here are all, oh, there is two, Never mind. There's two fishing rods here, but it's intended to be a speedboat rather than a uh, fishing boat. So the fishing boat or bigger boats on this side all kind of have a good amount of fishing gear. And then these little guys over here still have some fishing gear, just not as much because that's not kind of their main purpose, but they're all recreational boats. So you can enjoy the new fishing update from any of these. Now, for those of you interested in engineering talk, here we have the Regal Built Reba, again, my latest boat. It's been doing quite good on the downloads and it's something that I've not done before in a sense that it actually has twin supercharged modular engines. So I'm not using the pre-built engines for this boat. They didn't work with the profile of the boat, so I needed to have modulars. Now bringing the modulars in introduced a new set of problems for me um, and people were reporting that it was overheating. So first thing I did, and I spent a good amount of time trying to solve what on earth was going on. So I previously had a system where the engines would just use their pumps and just pump in and pump out seawater. So that was the first system I had. People were reporting to me that this system is broken with the new fluid update. And I know that these engines are pretty power hungry, like they do have superchargers and they do end up having around 23, 24 RPS. So they weren't happy with just pumping in and pumping out the seawater. So I went back to the drawing board and thought, what on earth could I do? But I was stuck with a very small profile. It only has a bottom beam here of six, or not a full beam, but just the bottom hull is six wide. So I didn't have much choice of where to put things. Someone suggested a heat sink. So that is exactly what I tried, but I could not fit two heat sinks because of course it's three by five. So I put one and I made a fatal mistake as an engineer. I didn't think about the consequences of this, but what I did is I put one single pump that pumps pretty much in through this port, through this uh, heat sink, out this and through these engines. Now, of course, the issue with that system, and it goes through this pump. So it'll go through the pump in here, through this engine, out this engine, through the sink to this. So it kind of circulates. The problem is one engine is always downstream of the other engine. So one engine would cool faster than the other engine. And I actually had a blowout as I was driving on one side. And I realized that system could not work. That was a fatally flawed system. Back to the drawing board. So again, with this very, very limited space that you find in here, it's only too tall for the most part, like two blocks tall. My theory and thought was I was going to put a single radiator here and have both engines feeding to it. And I didn't even bother because that came to the same problem of one engine would always be downstream. Of course, you could have a T-junction of pipes, but I think the efficiency would just be so shot and it would not even be worth it. So I then tried, okay, what am I going to do with the microcontroller? And I actually created a marine version of the microcontroller, which dropped out some of the useless things like taillights for this boat, because I pulled this right out of my car. In fact, it is a buckle engine in this boat, and I just plucked out their microcontroller. So what I did is I actually introduced a new system, which just detunes the engine slightly. It detunes it to about 70% of its throttle when you hit 90 degrees. So that was the first thing I did but that still was not working. I had to keep searching and I refused to give up. 
And finally, it hit me. You know, some of the niceties of this boat are this up front area here that has this equipment. Maybe I could stack two radiators in here, in this space. So I tried doing that and it wouldn't work. Now, I'm going to tell you, engineering in real life is about trade-offs. In my case, civil engineering, you're building a bridge. If you make it too expensive or too strong, in theory, it'll be too expensive. If you make it too cheap, it'll be weak. If you build it too fast, it's going to have all kinds of construction issues. If you build it too slow, the company is going to go bankrupt. So there's always trade-offs. You have to find that middle ground, that middle point of that satisfies everybody, everybody's happy, and it's a win-win. So I went on the search what I can do to this boat. I thought about increasing the size of this bench and hiding a radiator within the bench. Because of course you can't have a two, it'd have to be three wide and then you'd have a hollow middle. But I dropped that idea because I just did not want to adjust the way this thing looked on the outside. So you'll notice here what I did is now there's only one large gas tank. Previously there was two large gas tanks, now there is one large and one medium. And this allowed, thankfully, for two radiators to fit. So what each engine gets its own radiator and it feeds the engine. I tested this system out and the boat was able to get up to higher speeds. I also actually what I did in addition to that is I changed the gearbox ratio and I increased the engine throttle actually. So with the different gear ratio I was able to increase the throttle, get a higher top speed. So we were, we were kicking previously around 40 knots. Now this thing can get pretty stable at 50. So we gained 10 knots and it does not overheat now. So I'm, notice I'm holding W, this is still green, so I'm giving it a little bit of an electric boost to get up to speed, but then you release W and it just kind of keeps going. But here you have it. We're at that 40 knot, 49 knot mark and the engine is overheating or heating up now, but not overheating and you'll see. But pretty much we're getting a higher top speed. The thing looks quite stable, quite nice at this speed. And, best of all, once you hit 90 degrees, the engine detunes itself a little bit, but you don't bleed off top speed because you're, you're going so fast, the RPMs aren't even giving us that much push anymore. Like, if I hold W, we don't gain any speed because these propellers are already working their maximum. So even at an RPS of 19, you're still going to be getting this type of speed. So, I'm super happy with this system. I think you all are going to have a much more stable boat. I'm very happy with how it turned out. And, last but not least, I overhauled the map system. I added... Well, this was not. This is not my map creation. This is uh, someone else's. I put the link in the description for this creation. But previously, this heading was not there. And, if I press 2 to get the transponder locator, you didn't actually see this number. So this was a big problem. Um, I did not want to have this system not work. I want to have this system quite nice for all of my creations. So I found that having this ended up being much, much better. And also you'll notice that the boat uh, little icon doesn't extend to the end of the screen. I just kind of like it being a little bit of a, just a little like arrow rather than being a whole, a whole thing. So back to this, you're seeing we're reaching 55 degrees Celsius. We're hitting that 55 knot now, or thereabouts, and it's not overheating too much. And you would note that even when we end up with a nice um, high temperature, it's still not going to blow up or overheat. So, thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys are going to enjoy these new creations that I've quickly put out for you, you to enjoy the fishing update. Stay tuned for more content, for more creations, and as always, happy stormworksing everyone.